good morning everyone uh, similar topic uh, tibial posterior cruciate ligament divergent fracture uh, we have a case series over here uh, so tibial uh, a bit of the introduction tibial pcl divergent fractures are the most common isolated pcl lesion which is which accounts for around 75% of all lesions uh, they are uncommon injuries and uh, uh, an avulsion fracture is a very rare variant of this injury so uh, as sir said we can manage it by arthroscopic repair or open fixation uh, so we we conducted a study at our center uh, where we uh, we took 12 patients which, who had pcl avulsion fractures and uh, we we op we fix them by open fixation and then we we are doing a systematic review on literature uh, as to the outcomes of pcl avulsion by arthroscopic versus open fixation so uh, this was the inclusion and exclusion criteria we included in our study so we we did only type 3 avulsion fractures like sir said completely displaced uh, and we excluded type 1 and type 2 which could be managed conservatively uh, so these were the, out, the these were the scoring systems that we used the lysome knee scoring scale as well as the ikdc uh, evaluation and we uh, this this uh, just discussing a few cases that we had at our center this is a 46 year old male with a type 3 pcl avulsion fracture as well as a medial condyle fracture of the distal femur uh, so we we went ahead with a ct scan uh, which showed a pcl avulsion fragment clearly as well as a medial condyle fracture as could be seen in the 3D reconstruction. And we managed this with a uh, open, open fixation of the distal femur with a medial plate, as well as a, a PCL avulsion open fixation using the Berks and Schaefer approach. And uh, another similar case, a 40-year-old male with an isolated type 3 PCL avulsion fracture. This, this guy did not have any distal femur fracture, but just a PCL avulsion. And we managed him with a similar uh, CC screw fixation. Uh, these are the intra photos. We used a guide wire, used a uh, po direct posterior approach in this case. Uh, so used a guide wire to fix the fragment, and then hold it with a 4 mm CC screw, like I said, with a washer. So these are the post-op X-rays. As you can see, the screw is uh, like holding the fragment very well. And these are the uh, the three-month post-op uh, ROM photos. So we started uh, we started knee range of motion directly post-op. These are, this is a, uh, like sir said, we, a treatment alternative using a PCL jig, uh, fixing the fragment using arthroscopy, and using an inter some some uh, some papers show an interference screw fi to fix the uh, the sutures. So these are the results that we found at our center versus uh, that we found in literature. The li the lysome score in blue and the IKDC score in uh, in orange. As you can see, very similar results. Around 90 90% uh, is the is what we found at our center as well as in the different uh, uh, studies that we have seen in this on the similar topic. So, in a study by Sabat et al., uh, the laxity measurement showed arthroscopy fixation, while all other parameters were found to be similar in in both fixations. And in a systematic review, this is the largest systematic review by J. G. Song. Uh, he did. He included 12 studies with 134 patients. He could not find any difference between the uh, the uh, functional outcomes of open versus uh, arthroscopic repair of the same. Uh, so, our study found that there was no relation between PCL laxity and the functional outcomes at three month stage and at a one year stage. So, uh, and as most studies reveal the same, uh, the functional outcomes are the similar by the by both the methods like arthroscopic and open repair. So arthroscopic repair only when done by experienced surgeons gives good results, while open fixation can be done by even trauma surgeons. So that is depends on the surgeon. It is a surgeon's choice. So yeah, any questions?